today we're going to read The Mitten and the author of my story is Jan Brett. This story is about a boy named Nicky. His grandmother knits him a pair of mittens. When Nicky goes out to play, he loses one of the mittens. Let's read and find out what happens to the mitten and how he gets it back. But before we read, I have some vocabulary words for us to go over, so words you might not know what they mean. Wool, the soft hair in a sheep's coat that is used to make sweaters and blankets. Knit is a kind of sewing. Burrowed, hid in a hole or tunnel in the ground. And the last word is kickers, which are big feet. So while we read, I would like you to listen for these words in my story, okay? The mitten. Once, there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, his grandmother Baba did not want to knit. Oh, that was one of our, vo one of our vocabulary words. Did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never get it back. And see, there's a picture of her knitting. It's like sewing. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens. And finally, Baba made them for him. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Nikki loses a mitten, but I don't even think he knows his mitten is gone. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside it. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decide, decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten. He wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, oh, that was one of our vocabulary words too, his big kickers, he moved over. That means big feet. A hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog, as soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him go. snow appeared a badger. 
He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the rabbit and the hedgehog and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumbs up. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotted by, stopping to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy or tired. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumber lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up, not being one to let not being one to be left out in the cold. He began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal could argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged too many, too many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse. No bitter, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Achoo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. Then she saw he still had his new mittens. The end. So thank you for listening to the story. Now I have a few questions for you. So my first question is why do you think all the animals crawled into Nikki's white mitten? What do you think the animals were thinking? My next question is what happened to the mitten when more animals crawled into it? Thank you.